In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. A very warm welcome to this Mass, and it is warm out as well, isn't it? Today we had agreed ages ago to keep Sea Sunday, and we're going to have some kind of events going on throughout the weekend. Of course, that's not really been possible with lockdown and things, but in view of this, John has still brought along his boats for us to have a look at. Last Sunday, after the, at the end of the 10.30 family mass, I said to the children, what should we do next Sunday, forgetting it was Sea Sunday? And they said, oh, let's do Pentecost. So we've got a bit of the Holy Spirit thrown in as well. And in view of it being Sea Sunday, um, Colin decided to go over to Sark. It, it may not have been anything to do with Sea Sunday. And what with relying on the sea, the boat was cancelled yesterday coming back. So he's stuck over there, so, which is why he's not with us. But it seems quite apt that on Sea Sunday, one of us is inconvenienced by all things travelling by water. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, you led your people through the sea and made a path for them in deep waters. Be near all those who face the dangers of the sea, Protect them from disaster, help them on their way, and bring them safely to their desired haven with hearts thankful for your mercy. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said... Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the response to the psalm is, they cried to the Lord and he came to their aid. They cried to the Lord and he came to their aid. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They cried to the Lord, and he came to their aid. They mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths. 
Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. They cried to the Lord and he came to their aid. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still and the waves of the sea were hushed. They cried to the Lord and he came to their aid. Then they were glad because they had quiet and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. They cried to the Lord and he came to their aid. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own language. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I'll pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I'll show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Who is this then? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to thee, O Lord. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him, A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. Then he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is a gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise be to you, O Christ. May I speak to the glory of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please take a seat. On Sea Sunday, I suppose it's useful to think about boats. And I know we've got an expert on boats over here. 
but, or at least he's got a boat, I think, but my first knowledge of boats, I think, came from TV. Did anyone used to watch Bullseye? Yeah. Because on Bullseye, it was almost guaranteed you'd win a speedboat if you lived in a landlocked place like Wolverhampton. If you lived near the coast, you wouldn't get a speedboat, but if you were stuck you'd win a speedboat to be able to live on a trailer in your garden forever and a day afterwards. So I, knew, I learned a bit about speedboats. Then again, I learned a bit about the Titanic. And then pirates and that kind of thing, so those kind of boats. Then since moving here, I've learned about the Liberation and the Clipper, but probably best not to say too much about those. Quite different kinds of boats. In the Gospel reading, we hear there's a storm, there's wind. We've had a bit of wind the last couple of days as well, which has been quite pleasant, actually, after the heat. I wonder who likes the wind, who enjoys having the wind. Richard, when you're out on your boat, do you like there being much wind? No, not if there's too much. That's an interesting word, too much. Not if there's too much, but I think all these different boats... Well, if you've got a sailing boat, or if you've got a pirate's boat being a good example of it, well, if you ain't got any wind, it's not going to work too well, is it? You're going to be stuck there. So the wind isn't always bad. But too much wind, wind in the wrong place. The wrong sort of wind, maybe like the wrong sort of snow or something as far as British Rail have been concerned in the past or the wrong sort of tree, um, leaves on the line is wrong, is bad. I said the young people wanted us to think about Pentecost a bit today so we hear the Acts of the Apostles reading of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit coming. And then there's two ways it is described in that reading. It's like fire, like tongues of fire on people's heads. Also, it's described like the sound of a rushing wind. Not quite like the distortion we've been having on the, feed, uh, on the sound system recently that hopefully we've managed to isolate just before Mass started today. So we've got the fire and we've got wind. Wind literally like the breath of God. At the start of Genesis, we hear the Holy Spirit of God brooding over creation, moving, blowing over all of creation. It was, it, it was being created. So the wind was active in that kind of thing. But also, what, what does wind do? If we have a hurricane, it does a lot of damage. If you're stuck on a boat with too much wind, well, you're probably worrying about your life. On the other hand, if you've got a windmill, the wind is quite useful. If you've got a wind turbine, it means you're not paying for as much electricity because you're generating it yourself from the wind. So the wind is good, and the wind can be bad. But we can't see the wind. We can see sometimes things blowing in the wind. If there's a load of dust in it, it can be quite impressive. We can see what the wind has done but we can't see it itself. When it's nice weather, I've enjoyed at times driving around with the roof down of the car with my hair blowing around. That assumes I've not had my hair cut for a while, otherwise it's too short. Sadly, Bridget doesn't like feeling the wind blowing around in her hair in the car, so it can be a bit of a um, disagreement on the way back from school sometimes. When I was in Cape Town, they used to talk about the Cape Doctor, a particular wind blowing in from the coast, which was understood to blow the diseases away. The wind would make people healthy by removing that which was bad. But the Holy Spirit described like wind, wind which is powerful, wind which we realise we can't control. We might try, we might think we can do things, but in the end... If the wind's going to blow there, the wind's going to blow there. A wind that can change things completely. Whether that is blowing down fences, whether that's making you fear for your life on a boat, or whether that's taking you to other places. 
the Holy Spirit as wind can excite us. It can give us new energy by just sort of feel like we, when we feel wind, we can feel reawakened. The Holy Spirit can take us to other places like a sailing boat. The Holy Spirit, God within us, can make new things possible. It can all be a bit worrying at times, but Jesus says, don't be afraid. And so may we be re-energised, re-enlivened, encouraged by the Holy Spirit. Like wind as we wonder what God is doing in the church in the Vale here and now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so shall we stand as we declare our faith in God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Trevor, our Bishop, Tim, our Dean, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in thy mercy. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in thy mercy. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in thy mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, remembering especially all those for whom we have been asked to pray, among, the, among them Tony Hamill, Michelle Cairns, Barry Linacor, Hilary Brown, Josh Barbie, Julia Bentley, Father John Widows, Janet LePage, David and Lynn LaPelle, Molly Lagaff, Rosie Bradshaw, and Val Mollet. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, especially those who have died recently, and those whose anniversary of death falls around this time, among them Marlene Delahaye, Ray Lowe, John Collis, Ernest Mai, Ronald Serres, Biddy Brown, Denise Taylor, and Maureen Pedder. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers, and direct our way towards the attainment of salvation, that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And so we stand for the peace. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of all creation, for of thy bounty we have received this bread which we offer unto thee, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, whence it shall become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of all creation, for of thy bounty we have received this wine which we offer unto thee, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, whence it shall become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift the hearts of the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord. For he is the great High Priest who has loosed us from our sins and has made us to be a royal priesthood unto thee, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we must humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night as he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, and grant that all we, who are partakers of this holy communion, may be fulfilled with our grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who taketh away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive thee, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. God our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, we thank thee for feeding us with the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we offer thee our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of thy Spirit to live and work to thy praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy Spirit. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.